My name is Kathleen Tanock and I am a ceramic artist. I live and work from my home studio in Whistler, BC. My inspiration comes from rocks and pebbles. I try to find the textures and the surfaces, the colors that you find amongst the stones in, in riverbeds and I try to uh, imitate that into my work. Uh, surface is a very important part. I, I, I find that my work needs to invite touch. I think it's uh, important how something feels in your hand and even though my work is not necessarily functional, it's, it, it's very important to me how that piece still feels in, in, in somebody's hand. Um, I often collect rocks when I'm traveling. I, I would sometimes walk for hours with a, a, a rock in my hand and um, just the weight of it, the, the balance of it, just the texture and the, and, and the warmth and, and, and I try to somehow get that in, in, into my pieces. Sometimes find that my world becomes really, really small. I forget that there's a world outside and uh, living in Whistler I think that I'm so, we're so lucky that we can literally just step out of our studio and and, th and there it is. I mean, there is a world out there, and it's big, and it's and and it's absolutely beautiful. In Whistler, we have uh, the trails, the mountains, and the lakes, uh, just at, at our doorstep to, to enjoy every day. And uh, I, I never want to take that for granted. And it recharges you in a way that I think that uh, um, we need then to be able to come back into our studio and in our, into our little world and continue on with that. And being a potter is is really hard on your body. So I have to be very conscious to move in ways that are very different from the ways that I move inside my studio to uh, try to uh, open up and, and, uh, uh, and, and counter all of those repetitive motions that you constantly are subject to when, when, when you're working with clay and when you're, you're working in a studio. I am not trying to move the clay but I'm trying to respond to the clay's movement and um, in order to be able to do that you you have to be really present and I think that's where you find the, the, the true joy in the in the process is when you are completely present it almost becomes a little bit of a of a dance and almost always it's the clay that takes the lead in that dance. I wake up and I go to my studio I am still extremely excited I am uh, excited about what possibly could happen that day because uh, I think as any artist would be able to tell you that the most exciting thing about art is the way that it evolves and it always does anything that I do today is uh, mirrored by the 23 years of what preceded it and uh, there's nothing that uh, I do today that doesn't come either out of a triumph and uh, most often probably a, a failure of, uh, of, of the day before and, uh, and, and, and that's the exciting thing. I, I read something once about uh, buying something that is handmade and uh, the person said if you buy something that is handmade then you're buying a moment in somebody's life. And I actually think that it goes deeper than that because you're actually not buying just that moment in that person's life, you're actually buying the entire journey that led up to that moment of somebody making that, making that piece. And, and that journey is not always, it's not always a pretty one. It, um, it, it, it can be difficult and it can be scary. Any artist would tell you that that, that journey has an immense amount of, uh, of joy in its path, but it also has um, a lot of hard work, it has a lot of self-doubt, it has a lot of fear, and I am so, so lucky that I get to make my, my living from, uh, from my passion and from what, I, from what I truly love and that I get to live and do it here in, in Whistler and I get to, to do it with a, a, a beautiful family uh, by my side. I, I just cannot speak about how, how lucky I am and I guess the, the harder I work the, the luckier I get and that was unexpected so <laughs> I think you could get out here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't do it. It's, it is very emotional. <laughs>